in this lecture uh, we will talk about uh, del operator gradient and divergence so first of all this uh, symbol you must have seen in your mathematics engineering mathematics so let us uh, first know uh, about what does this physically represent so you all must have studied this single dimension uh, partial differential del del x right so if you take uh, del del x of some function it will represent the change of that function in the direction of x right um, if you are changing the x how is this function is changing right which is dependent on x now what happens if the function is in multiple dimension so this function represent only one dimension which is x dimension so what happens if your quantity whether it is a scalar or a vector it is uh, it is a three dimensional quantity like it is a 3d object and if it is changing then you must be needing some kind of a differential operator that could see the changes in all the direction and represent it as a single vector or a scalar so for these purposes we use del operator right so uh, this del operator is nothing but uh, like this is written in the cartesian coordinate and uh, it will show the change uh, change of any particular function with respect to x y and z uh, uh, coordinates and along with the direction given by this unit vector ax ay and az now where is this del operator used it is used to calculate gradient of a scalar it is used to calculate divergence of a vector it is used to calculate curl of a vector and also it is used to calculate the laplacian of a vector uh, scalar v so what are these things we are going to study in the further lectures so this del uh, can be represented since we have studied three uh, coordinate system uh, the cartesian uh, the spherical and the cylindrical coordinate system so we will have to represent this del in all these three coordinate system so this was cartesian and uh, this formula for del will be for uh, cylindrical coordinate system the only difference is that in place of del phi we have written rho into del phi so i told you already that uh, since phi represent an angle so to convert it into a length uh, then you have to multiply rho with it similarly uh, if you represent del in the spherical coordinates uh, you will have to multiply r in d, uh, del theta and r sin theta in d phi so we have already discussed all these things in the previous lecture now uh, what is a gradient of a scalar so uh, the first thing is that you always calculate gradient for a scalar not for a vector so uh, according to the definition gradient of a scalar uh, quantity v represents the direction and magnitude in which that particular scalar is changing right you already know that del uh, del uh, operator represents the change in three dimensional space so if you take this del of uh, any particular scalar it will give the change uh, which is happening in that particular scalar quantity and the direction since this gradient of a scalar will represent a, a vector so vector has magnitude and direction so magnitude will be represented by the magnitude of change happening in v and the direction will be represented by the direction in which this v is changing maximum so this is what it is written here in this definition you can read and uh, here also the magnitude of del v equals the maximum rate of change in v per unit distance and the direction will be in the direction of maximum rate of change in v right so for cartesian system uh, the gradient of a scalar can be written as this v is a scalar quantity or scalar function and uh, nothing uh, it, it is just uh, multiplied the, this del operator is just multiplied by this uh, uh, scalar quantity v so this is what uh, you will get for cartesian similarly you will get for uh, this formula for cylindrical and this formula for spherical coordinate so this is gradient of a scalar now let us do one example so in this example as you can see there is a scalar field given w uh, whose value is 10 r sin square theta cos phi it is a scalar because no direction is given so from just seeing this function can you tell me which coordinate uh, it is written since r theta and phi it is 
it is a spherical coordinate right it is a function which is written using spherical coordinates so you have to find the gradient of this particular scalar field so you will apply the formula of gradient used in spherical coordinates so this was the formula we just studied uh, here so we will apply this function in this formula and then calculate our answer so let us put uh, in place of v we will have del of w is equal to del del r in place of w we will put 10r sin square theta cos phi plus sorry uh, this is ar right since this will become a vector plus similarly i will write all the other uh, values so here i have written uh, the values and uh, if you see you can cancel this r from this r because this is the partial differential differential with respect to theta and from here r sin theta to r and sin theta so it will get simplified to so uh, upon solving this we will get this equation and if you further solve it you are going to get this answer so this will be your final answer so this is how you will uh, calculate the gradient just by using the formulas i have discussed earlier now coming to the divergence of a vector uh in gradient we used a scalar so the gradient was calculated for a scalar and the quantity which we got as a result was a vector right which was uh, representing the direction of the maximum change of that particular scalar quantity now in divergence the opposite happens like the name suggest what does divergence means divergence means something going out coming out from a particular point or particular surface right so the divergence of a vector since it is a di it, it is a quantity that is taken upon a vector it represents the outgoing flux of a particular given vector which is a in this case uh, which is uh, coming out from a particular closed surface and if that surface area is shrinking towards zero so what it will become this if 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 a particular closed surface is shrinking towards a particular point it basically becomes a point so divergence of any vector a at a given point p represents the outgoing flux per unit volume because you have shrank that volume to one single point uh so the divergence of any vector a at a particular point represents the outgoing flux of that particular vector a and this is represented by del dot a so we are taking basically dot product and the outcome will be a scalar quantity so we take divergence of a vector and the outcome becomes a scalar quantity and it is represented by the dot product of del operator and that particular vector a so it is also represented by this formula here delta v is the volume of that particular surface s which is shrinking to zero so it is represented by the uh, closed surface integral of that particular uh, vector a uh, and with when the volume is shrinking to uh, zero so in the below diagrams if you can see this is the point p and this is a vector a which is going outward since this vector is going outward from the p then the divergence will become positive it will be a positive divergence so whatever quantity you will get uh, after calculating the divergence it will be in positive now in the second diagram if you see that the fields of a suppose this is also a vector a if the fields of a vector a are coming inside the point p so is it diverging or it is converging so it is basically converging which is a negative of divergence so this particular uh, if you calculate the divergence of a in this case you will get a negative quantity here that is negative divergence in the last figure if you can see some lines are coming inside and some lines are going outside right so whatever lines are coming inside are going outside also so nothing uh, if you take the balance it will become negative is equal to positive so you are going to get a zero divergence so whatever is coming is going out so the overall divergence of this kind of a field will be zero right now uh, let us see the formula of divergence in all the three coordinates we have discussed so this is basically since uh, we have taken the dot product of del and a uh, and remember this a quantity was 
what was that a quantity for cartesian coordinate it was ax ax plus ay ay plus az az right here ax ay and az was unit vector and what was del quantity del quantity was this uh, del by del x ax del by del y ay and del by del z az so if you take the dot product of the two vectors only the same direction values will be retaining like the ax multiplied by del by del x will be retaining and obviously it is it will become a scalar so this unit vector will vanish similarly del ay by ay will be retained and then az by az will be retained retained so uh, in cartesian coordinate this is the formula for uh, divergence of a vector a in cylindrical coordinate you can see the proof all these proofs are given in the sadiku book of electromagnetic theory if you want the proof you can go and check there but i think it is not needed it will be important for you to learn all these formulas right you have to learn all these formula make a list and learn them so that it will become easier for you to solve numericals in the exam so for cylindrical coordinates uh, the formula for divergence will be this uh, the changes you can see is that there is one by row here and then row is multiplied here also and like this similarly this is the formula for uh, divergence calculated for a spherical coordinate and you have to learn these formulas now there are a few properties to remember uh, while calculating divergence of a vector field that it produces a scalar field as i have already told you divergence of a scalar does not make any sense because uh, something which diverges is always a vector uh, again then Uh, if you take divergence of some of two vectors this divergence quantity is going to be distributed right del dot a plus del dot b and the formula for divergence of two vector quantities will be like this right del dot va will be equal to v into del dot a plus a into a dot del v right a dot del v so you have to remember this formula now depending on the divergence uh, of any vector we have a theorem called divergence theorem and it is also called a gauss theorem or gauss ostrogratsky theorem right so what does this say this theorem say the theorem says that the total outward flux of a particular vector field from a uh, closed surface that is coming out will be equal to the volume integral of divergence of that same vector field a so for example if this uh, closed surface uh, is given here whose volume is v and suppose there is some vector a which is coming out the flux of this vector is coming out right this is your vector a so if you calculate the closed surface integral remember the surface integral closed surface integral that we discussed if we calculate the closed surface integral of this vector uh a then according to divergence theorem this will be equal to volume integral of divergence of this same vector a uh, calculated over this same volume which is enclosed by this closed surface s right so this theorem basically is very helpful in uh, converting closed surface integral to volume integral and vice versa so this is going to be very helpful and a lot of question comes in competitive exams like gate and ies from this theorem now let us do one example on divergence and then we will close this video uh, there is a vector given q and uh, you have to find the divergence of this particular vector so just by seeing this vector can you tell me which coordinate this vector is written since it is phi rho and z it is a cylindrical coordinate right now uh, for cylindrical coordinate we have the formula of divergence here so from here i have taken the divergence formula and since uh, this is a q i can also say it as a vector quantity a since we are talking about a so this quantity you can say as a rho dot a rho this quantity will be a phi dot a phi and this quantity will be a z a z right now using this formula you can just put these values here here and this one here and you can directly find the answer so your answer will be this so you go home and you just 
um, I think you are already home. So you can uh, put these values and try yourself to get this answer, right? It would be better for you to exercise yourself. Thank you.